Smokey goes down, comes back to win the county championship. Well, I finally got to see Smokey wrestle at home. Didn't go away to the matches very much. And he was wrestling the boy that I'd seen him wrestle at the very start of the season and just squash him. This is a round robin deal. He wouldn't close. He's like a big bear pawing at the kid, keeping him back. Didn't like, you know, he didn't want to go in and get him, and he didn't want, I guess, rest the guy getting him and hurting him. I don't know what was in his mind, but it was, you know, it wasn't wasn't Smokey wrestling. It was somebody else. So I had some thoughts about, you know, what I might do to help, and. Uh, Match was over, and the boys were in the showers. I hung around, waiting for a chance to talk to the coach. The coach came out after a while, and I said, Can I have a word with you? Sure. So I told him, I said, You know, I'd like to talk to Smokey, but you know, I don't want to offend you in any way. You're the coach. And I don't, you know, all about wrestling. I don't know anything about wrestling. Never wrestled. Never got to really watch my boy wrestle. I've just seen a few matches in the last couple of years. He said, you might as well talk to him. He told me in there in the dressing room that he's through, that he's turning his uniform in. Well, I said, if you don't mind, I will. He said, talk to him. I said, uh, okay. Tell him to stop by the office before he leaves. So the coach did, and I didn't see the coach again, and pretty soon I'm thinking, mm-mm, time's going by. Maybe Smokey's going to try to sneak out, not face me. That was a silly thought. That boy had way more character than that. Here he came. Got a hangdog, but he came. Come on in, sit down. So we're just sitting in the office, and I say, Smokey... I don't know what's going on, but uh, the way you're wrestling now, I understand you're going to quit, but I want you to come out one more day. I said, you know, you know I put the boxing gloves on with the boy once that was being our end. I want to wrestle you. I believe I can beat you as a wrestler. You could tell he thought, oh, that's a pretty silly thought. No, I said, I'm serious. The way you're wrestling right now, I'm, I'm a better wrestler than you are. Well, he didn't think so, and his face showed that he didn't, and he agreed that he'd be there on Monday. So he was no more than out of sight and away from the playground and the foreground of the of the uh, junior high, and coach comes in and says, well, what did he say? Well, I said, he says he's going to quit, but he and I made a deal that he'd come out one more day on Monday, and I'm going to wrestle him, and I told him I could beat him. He grinned, he said, you be careful, he'll hurt you. Well... We didn't do takedowns. We started with one of us down and the other one down. And we wrestled pretty good. But I didn't win any. So we got through with that. And I asked him to come by and visit again a little bit. He said, that's all right. You don't need to talk to me anymore. I'll be back, at the, I'm back on the team. And I'll be there tomorrow. Well, then I got to thinking a little bit. There might be a little bit more involved here than just the fear that he got. I don't think Jim Sears was out for wrestling. If he was, he was enough lighter that uh, I'm not sure there was much competition there. And I got to thinking, you know, Coach Sandoval probably wrestled. He's not a big man now as a man, and I bet he wrestled in college, though, 128, maybe even. Well, he might have got up to 138, but I doubt it. So, you know, small man moves, not big man moves. And maybe some of the moves that he's teaching cause Smokey to get into a position because the kid that he wouldn't really wrestle that day, I saw him wrestle, when the kid he had squashed the first time, I think actually beat him. On a reversal that he was making, the kid got on him and pinned him. I think he did. Memory's not a really reliable thing on this sort of stuff. Well... I 
tow coach. That, you know, maybe you need to give a little thought to big man moves, big man escapes. Well, Coach Sandoval didn't make any comment, but he was glad that Smokey wasn't going to quit the team. Well, you know, on Monday he came by and he said, you know what, I talked to Art Madrid over the weekend. Art was the very fine high school wrestling coach. And he said, uh, after Monday, from Monday on, I don't know if it was three days a week or what, Smokey's going to go over to the high school and work out with the high school wrestlers. And boy, the high school had a boy that had been a very, very good junior high wrestler and was doing very well wrestling for the high school, a heavyweight named Tom Reese. So Smokey got to work out with a coach that knew more about big man moves and with an opponent that darn well knew a lot more about big man moves. And Smokey started winning again. Made short order of most of the rest of the second round. And I don't remember whether he uh, won or lost when he wrestled the boy from Wheat Ridge again on that wrestle round robin. But I do know that at the end of the year there is a tournament to decide the county champion. And I think the boy from Wheat Ridge is in there is seated number one, smoking number two, and sure enough, I didn't go down, but the coach and others that went down told me, hey, it came down to the finalist for the championship, Smokey versus the boy from Wheat Ridge. And they, they said they really got out and wrestled hard. Not many points scored. Not many at all, from what I remember. Something like a three to two or four to three or something. But a real close match. But Smokey Barnes, ninth grade, heavyweight champion of Jefferson County Junior High Wrestling Tournament. So then he goes into high school and eventually ends up being the state champion in high school. I'm sure at that tournament his parents were so proud they could pop buttons, but they couldn't have been much prouder or much happier than I was.